a very good morning to all the students of navjeevan model senior secondary school i hope you all are fine in today's video we are going to watch a clip related to our literature chapter the red handed league in which the criminal john kelly creates the red handed league to trick mr wilson into leaving his shop during the day so that he and his partner could dig a tunnel and rob a bank do they succeed let's see i lived with my wife in another part of london my friend sherlock holmes continued to live in his apartment in baker street one day in the autumn of 1819 i decided to visit my friend but when i arrived at his apartment i found he already had a visitor i found he already had a visitor This visitor was an old man. He was fat with a red face. But the most unusual thing about him was his hair. The color of the old man's hair was bright red. "I'm sorry, Holmes," I said. "I didn't know you were busy. I'll wait in the next room." But Holmes didn't want me to leave. He pulled me into the room and closed the door. "This is my friend, Dr. Watson," he said to the old man. Dr. Watson has helped me with many cases. Perhaps he can also help me with yours. I am very interested in your cases, Holmes. This is Mr. Jabez Wilson, went on Holmes. The old man nodded to me. Mr. Wilson has come to me with a very unusual story. It's the most interesting problem I've heard for a long time. Mr. Wilson, could you please tell your story again from the beginning? I'd like Dr. Watson to hear it. Mr. Wilson pulled an old newspaper out of his pocket. He opened the paper on his knees and turned to the advertisement page. He ran his finger down the advertisements and pointed to one of them. Here, he said, this is how everything began. Read it for yourself, Dr. Watson. I took the newspaper from Mr. Wilson. It was the Morning Chronicle and was two months old. I read the advertisement. The Red-Headed League. Another vacancy is open for someone wishing to become a member of the league. Salary: four pounds a week. All red-headed men over 21 years old should come on Monday at 11 a.m. to this address: Duncan Ross, The Red-Headed League, 7 Pope's Court, Fleet Street, London. What a strange. Whatever can it mean? Aft. <laughs> It's very unusual, isn't it? He said. And now, Mr. Wilson, tell us your story. Well, began Mr. Wilson. I have a small shop in Saxe Coburg Square in the city of London. But business hasn't been good for some time, and I don't make much money anymore. I used to have two assistants. But now I can only pay one. My assistant is very interested in learning the business, so he's willing to work for half pay. That's very unusual," said Holmes. "What's the name of your assistant?" "Vincent Spaulding," replied Mr. Wilson. "He's an excellent assistant, but he does do one unusual thing. Spaulding's very interested in photography and takes a lot of photographs." He develops these photographs himself in the cellar of my. We live very quietly," continued Mr. Wilson. "I don't go out very much, and I don't read the newspapers. One day, eight weeks ago, Spaulding came to me with a newspaper in his hand. It was the same newspaper that I showed you, Doctor Watson." "Mr. Wilson," said Spaulding, "I wish I were a red-headed man. Why?" I asked in surprise. Well, here's another vacancy in the Red-Headed League," replied Spaulding. "The Red-Headed League?" I asked. "What's that?" Spaulding looked at me and laughed. "Haven't you ever heard of the Red-Headed League?" he said. "You could become a member and make a lot of money." "Well, when I heard that," said Mr. Wilson, "at once I became very interested. I needed more money." So I asked Spaulding to tell me more about this red-headed league. I think," said Spaulding, "the league was."
was started by an American called Ezekiah Hopkins. Ezekiah Hopkins was a very rich man and enjoyed doing unusual things. Hopkins was red-headed himself and liked all other red-headed men. So when he died, he left his money and his will to help red-headed men. The money was used to start the red-headed league. When a man became a member, he would be paid an excellent salary for very little work. And now, said Spalding, showing me the advertisement again, here's another vacancy in the league. Why don't you go to Pope's court, Mr. Wilson? I'm sure you could become a member. Now, as you see, gentlemen, continued Mr. Wilson, the color of my hair is bright red, so I thought I could easily become a member of this red-headed league. Vincent Spaulding seemed to know a lot about the league, so I asked him to come with me to the address in the advertisement. We closed the shop for the day and set off for Pope's Court, Fleet Street. Holmes rubbed his hands together and smiled. Your story is very interesting, Mr. Wilson. He said, please go on. When we arrived in Fleet Street, said Mr. Wilson, we saw a strange thing. The whole street was full of red-headed men. They had all come to answer the advertisement. When I saw how many men were waiting, I wanted to go home. But Spalding wouldn't let me. He pushed and pulled me through the crowd. At last, we reached the stairs leading up to the office in Pope's Court. A small man was sitting behind a table. The color of this man's hair was a brighter red than my own. This is Mr. Jabez Wilson, said my assistant. He has come about the vacancy in the league. The small man looked carefully at my hair. He looked at it for such a long time that I began to feel uncomfortable. Suddenly, he bent forward and grabbed my hair with both hands. He pulled at it until I cried out in pain. I am sorry I hurt you, said the man. Your hair is a wonderful color, but I had to make sure you weren't wearing a wig. I had to find out if your hair was real. Then he went over to the window. He opened it and shouted down to the men below that the vacancy was taken. The red-headed men groaned with disappointment. Then they began to walk away. In a few minutes, the square was empty. My name said the small man, is Duncan Ross. You are now a member of the Red-Headed League. When can you start the job? Well, that's going to be difficult, I replied. I have a business already. Oh, don't worry about that, Mr. Wilson, cried Spalding. I can look after the business for you. Now, I knew that my assistant was a good worker and would look after my business well. So I asked Duncan Ross, what are the hours of work? Every day between the hours of 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, replied Mr. Ross. The pay is four pounds a week. But you must not leave the office at any time between 10 and 2. If you leave for any reason, you'll lose your pay. I understand, I said. And what is the work? Copying out the Encyclopedia Britannica. The first book of it is over there. Will you be able to start work tomorrow? Certainly, I said. And goodbye, Mr. Wilson. I hope you enjoy your work. I went home with Vincent Spaulding. I was very pleased. It was an easy job to copy out the Encyclopedia Britannica, and the pay was excellent. Next morning, when I arrived at the office, Duncan Ross was waiting for me. I started copying out the Encyclopedia, beginning with subjects under the letter A. Sometimes Mr. Ross left the room, but he kept coming back to see me. At two o'clock, he told me I had worked well, he was very pleased, then I left, and he locked the office door behind me. The same day for eight weeks. Every morning I began work at ten, and every afternoon I left at two. Every Saturday, I was given four pounds for my week's work. At first, Mr. Ross came into the office to watch me work. But after a time, he stopped coming. However, I was afraid to leave the office. I didn't want to lose my pay. But suddenly, everything came to an end. To an end? Asked Holmes. Yes. This morning, I went to work as usual at 10 o'clock, but the door was locked, and on it was this card. Mr. Wilson held up a small...
piece of white card. This is what it said. The Red-Headed League is finished. The 9th of October, 1890. Holmes and I looked at the piece of white card. Then we looked at Mr. Wilson's face. He looked very disappointed and upset. But there was also something rather funny about the Red-Headed League. Suddenly, we both began to laugh. I don't think this is funny, cried Mr. Wilson angrily. Perhaps I should take my case somewhere else. No, no, <laughs> said Holmes. That's all for today's video. We will continue our chapter, our story of red-handed league in next video. So, thank you everyone for watching the video.